World famous aviator Charles Lindbergh developed his love of nature and flying in his hometown of Little Falls, Minnesota. Today, his childhood home and family farm have become a place where visitors can step back in time to experience life at the dawn of the modern age. 1916, Charles says they're gonna spend their first winter here and they've had to winterize the house. Now you're, now you're at the, the Lindbergh house. Come on this way. This is where Charles developed his ideas as an adult. This is where he saw his first airplane and was reading all those stories during the First World War about fighter pilots and just the romance of the air. And it's where he really connected with the environment, growing up on a farm. And at 7.52, the spirit of St. Louis began to roll down the muddy runway. In 1927, after Lindbergh made his famous flight, this house was abandoned. Nobody was living here, the family still owned it. Um, they had moved all their possessions out because his mother had moved out in 1920 as well as Charles. And it was ransacked. The, the people in this area came to this place. Lindbergh was so famous. They just wanted to have a little piece of him. And as a result of all of this, there was a big rally in the community to, to preserve this house. They recognized its significance and they worked with the family to create Charles A. Lindbergh State Park. And the park is named after Charles's father, C.A. Lindbergh, who was a congressman for the state of Minnesota out in Washington, D.C. for 10 years. Come on this way. The family donated the 110 acre farm with the house and the tenant house and the few remaining out outbuildings to the state of Minnesota in 1931 for that purpose. Watch your step though. In 1954, after his mother's death, Charles went through all of her possessions and started sorting things out. Anything that pertained to here in, on the farm in Minnesota came to the Minnesota Historical Society. And we've really tried to set it up in a way so that it's authentic to how it was when Lindbergh was a boy. That's the neatest part for me about this site is Lindbergh's involvement in the late 60s and early 70s before his death. He told MHS staff his stories of his youth and said this goes here and that goes there. He does all the plumbing, the water is pumped through that big majestic wood stove in the kitchen. And so when you walk through the house today, it looks very much like it did in the 19-teens. Um, behind me is Evangeline's piano, which is a wedding present uh, from her husband in 1901. We've got dishes in the kitchen, uh, Charles' bed out on the porch. Some of his toys are on display either here in the historic house or over in the visitor center. So you get a, just that feel of walking into the past and what Charles' life must have been like as a youth. Sorry, Mrs. Lindbergh, we've got lots to do today. We'll have to maybe do it later. Once a month, we try and step back in time and uh, really immerse ourselves in the world of Charles' youth. Um, in 1918, uh, Charles was running the family farm. He is released from school in order to do so, to help supply food for the war effort. Um, and they have lived in this house for a whole year and just it allows us to tell some of those key stories of his youth, of, of what it was like to be on a farm, what is it like to finally spend a winter in a house that wasn't designed to be inhabited in the winter time. Another interesting story is our well. I think the public enjoys the stories about Charles, learning from his mother of what this, this famous man was like as a boy, and that as a boy he wasn't that different than you or I as a child. Your children carry firewood for your family, right? Yes, of course you do. That he so played good. outside and got into trouble and all of these other different things that kids do and that his world was changing so rapidly around him that he grew up in an era of war and what did that do to his life? How did that change him? Um, how did that inspire him? You forget his roots. He, he was so large, so big. Um, his flight came along right at the time that modern technology with the film industry and radio and that's all you saw was that public face and he was such a private person that you wouldn't have heard about his farm life unless you knew him from here in Little Falls as a youth. And Charles will split the firewood and then, and then I have some nice firewood to start my stove in the morning. But I think a lot of historic sites do the living history because it connects the visitor with the past so much better than a textbook can. They actually forget where they are and what, what year it is because it's just so um, intense. To be able to come to the place where it happened, to walk through the halls and to interact with characters who are portraying people from the past and can communicate 
that emotion, the, the, the deeper feelings behind just the facts, I think is what makes it come alive. And it's entertainment as well as education for the visitor. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.